Welcome to Derivative on Twine 2.6. In this video, we're going to look at the concept of forced passage transition as part of interactivity in SugarCube 2.36. So as we've seen across many videos now, we can use text box, we can use text area, we can use checkbox and number box and list box, as well as what we've already seen of the link macro and its sister macros of link prepend, link replace, and link append. In this final video of this set of interactivity, I want to look at forced passage transitions. Now, I want to note here that in most cases, there's not a real reason to use the macro covered in this video. However, there are a few cases where you might want to use it. And the macro I'm going to discuss is the go to macro. The go to macro causes the story to immediately go to some location, another passage. Now, in most cases, especially as we've seen with the link macro, the link macro kind of already does this. That is, we can create the text we want the reader to see, and then we can immediately transition to a new passage already using link macro itself. However, there might be some situations where you want to immediately change something. In this case, we are taking interactivity away from a reader, and this is why it's kind of the closing of this section. So in most cases of the other macros we've seen as part of this section, we are adding interactivity as part of using the go-to macro. In most cases, we're taking it away, or at least we're changing how we think about it. So let's look at some of a silly example, and then I'll talk about ways you might want to use this. Let's go ahead and look at this right here. So notice, as I said, this example right here is a little bit silly because in most cases we could actually just put the name of the passage right here within the link macro itself and then we could show text and then when the text is clicked immediately go to that passage. However, if we wanted to, we can use the go to macro to immediately go to another passage. Again, link macro already does this and so this particular example is a little bit silly. But in this case right here, notice, so example one says there is no escape. So over here, we try to escape, go to one, go to one, there's no escape. So let's go ahead and play this. We try to escape, there's no escape. So notice in this case, we immediately remove the interactivity because we forced a passage transition to another passage. So as far as the reader is concerned, they will immediately clicked on a link and something happened. Now again, we could have used the link macro to do this, but the go-to macro immediately goes to something else. Stop what it's doing and immediately does a passage transition. Let's look at another example. So over here in example two, I'm going to set up a variable and then immediately go to the passage called example two. Now the reason I'm going to do this is because I actually want to do things over here in example two, but I'm going to start over here in a completely different passage. So what's going to happen is we're going to change the value of a variable, change counter to eight, and then immediately go to example two. So as far as the reader's concerned, they're never going to see example two start. They're only ever going to see example two. When we land into example two, we have the opportunity to use a pattern we've seen before. Notice right here, we will see the plus, and then we will be refreshing, that is coming back to the same passage and rerunning it again and again and again. Except in this case, if count is ever greater than 10, we're going to immediately go to the exit. And this is one of the special cases where the go-to macro is particularly useful. If you want to set some kind of thresholds or some type of range where something is allowed but something isn't allowed for a reader, or in this case, life runs out or magic runs out or whatever kind of statistic you're tracking the story, and then once that happens, go to another passage. This is a very useful case for the go-to macro. When you want to immediately cut to something else based on, again, some type of threshold or range, in this case, we're going to use a counter. So let's go ahead and play this so we can see what this looks like in action. So and notice we did not see example two start. We immediately jumped to another passage and it says current counter eight. Remember, don't go above 10. Again, refresh, refresh, boom, counter one above 10 because we immediately went to example two exit. Again, in many cases, the link macro will kind of solve this problem if we want to do a passive transition after doing something. But if occasional cases where we want something to immediately happen, that is we want to take interactivity away from our reader, we can use the go-to macro in its place. This video has been an examination of the go-to macro for removing interactivity. Again, we've seen a number of macros to add interactivity, the link macro, its sister macros, along with text area and text box, 
a list box and check box and number box and a large number of things at this point. However, there might be some cases where you want something to happen immediately. You want to take that interactivity away. In these cases, immediately jump to something else. Again, particularly useful for things like health and magic or other statistics we're using as part of kind of narrative continuation. As long as they have health or as long as they have magic, they're staying in the story. As long as they have lives, once they run out, something happens, it immediately goes to another passage. So again, a particularly useful examples of how to use the go-to macro. In most cases, the link macro will kind of solve that same problem. But if we ever want to immediately jump to something else, again, as part of some conditional thing, working with the if macro or something else, we can use the go-to macro for that purpose. Thanks for watching.